Greetings family, we're here live on Revolutionary Cam and we're doing an audio Skype interview with myself, Bomani, and Victoria Lucy. Is it alright if we call you Victoria Lucy or what's, our prop, what's your, your proper title as far as our introduction to you as a journalist? Uh, uh, that's, that's absolutely fine. Right. Victoria or Victoria Lucy? Um, I mean, Victoria is just more simple, so I go with Victoria. <laughs> Excellent, and uh, can you hear me good? I can hear you fine. Yes, perfect. I um, I was on Facebook and I looked, I saw a message from you when you first sent yeah. the message. I want to say about two weeks ago that you were interested in connecting with uh, myself, Bomani Tayemba, the director of Africa for Africans, in reference mm -hmm. to a research project. And I always appreciate you know, anyone reaching out. Uh, reaching out to myself or us because that's truly the only way that a lot of times information gets shared correctly because a lot of times people might see what your, your operation do and they might just look at it in a, in a negative or bad way or or, or, with not, or without clarity like for instance the word Africa for the Africans and then we have tours and investment that you know, kind of explain that we do tours and investment but the word Africa for the Africans might throw people off and um, and so um, a lot of times we have people that are, you know, that are you know, not, um, you know, not black or African, you know, might feel, I don't know if they might feel distracted by the title and not reach out to us, but I always appreciate those who do, you know, in general, because what we do deal with world history and we do our best to share our story with the world. And that's why I love the Facebook, the YouTube and the website itself to where we can share our videos of our Africa tours and investments and we always welcome those who you know want to do any kind of project uh, with us uh, we're here to do business with the world uh, we run a special program which is the uh, Ghana repatriation investment tours and that's more catered to uh, our African Americans who are looking to repatriate but also you have other other um, African descendants in different parts of the world that are more than welcome to join the journey and for those who are different race or different culture we could always just put together a program but uh, you know you know this one for the record is that you know people know we're here to do business and we're here to do efficient business and what we deal with is respectfully in our culture and sharing our story yeah that's great. Thanks for that for money. I was just wondering, why do you think people would be thrown off by your title, Africa for the Africans? That's, that's, that's a good question. Uh, it's a historical title dealing with uh, Marcus Mzai Garvey, the uh, founder of the UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association. And this was in, um, in the early 19, uh, 1914, an era where... Um, Africans um, was coming out of the, the, the you know, coming out of being being free or so-called free from you know from em emancipation. Uh, you're talking about a, a time frame of uh, Reconstruction and Jim Crow. You're talking about a lot of different era that uh, really undermined the growth of the Africans that were former enslaved to being opened up into the land the land of their their captures their captures to live in the same society so it's always been a you know it's always been a conflict and it's been a lot of confusion because once you're taking out your natural habitat and being brought to another country and you're not able to speak your own language you're not able to speak your own you know you know you're not able to live your own culture eat your own food and naturally be in the same habitat the way you are you're going to change to a point but your dna is still the same uh you you, you might have lost certain things so it's always something in the africans in the diaspora that were taken away from their homeland and brought to this new side of the world where some people have been more intrigued than others i want to find out their roots i want to find out how i got to this side of the world and and have that, that, that interest. And for myself, that's one of the interests that brought me into traveling to Africa uh, from 2004 to 2014 for the 10 straight years. And it's been a wonderful journey. It's made me a better person and it's, you know, made me more focused to, you know, to, you know, to how life is short and 
You know, it's like if you're gonna live life, you know, what are you what are you willing to contribute, or what are you willing to do to change, or make you know make this world a better place. You know, if nothing else, for your, your family, your children, for you know your, your culture. And so it's you know it's 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 great on and clarifying identity because if you're in the school system here in America, you don't get the vital education you need as far as your culture, your history, because not everyone that came to America or live in America have the same history as the Africans that live here in America. Okay, why do you think that is, that children aren't really being educated about their roots? I would say, uh, and this is just, you know, my general opinion, in one case it may be not beneficial to the system that we live in. You know, the system that we live in, are, you know, is governed and controlled by you know, you know, non-Africans and as far as power and strength to make changes and do things, you know, do things to effectively make certain changes, a group of society uh, w would feel threatened by another group of society if they have become more conscious, more educated about uh, who they are to the point where they start doing for themselves and start progressing. And that's why you have historical events um, with Africans in America as your as your Rosewood and your Oklahoma cities where progressive you know, progressive communities were sabotaged uh, because of their self-sufficient self-reliance uh, so you have a country that the Africans Africans that I was taken with that, that they, they live in a country we live in a country where I was where certain laws certain foundations were set and you know, once you build a nation and you set certain foundations, you want your society to follow. So, I would think that would be the reason why you know certain things are taught in in school in general. Um, to where, you know, in our case, and you know, I'm, I'm not just speaking from this you know, myself, just being an African, an African living in America, but to the perspective of, of when you look at history and you look at how profound how it's told about the greatness of other race and culture and then that's not glorified in the system of you know when we went to school it took me you know it took me joining study groups to actually learn my roots and culture and that's from you know friends just sharing information and saying hey let's you know let's uh you know let's learn about our roots and let's you know take a journey to africa and let's open our mind up to you know where we come from and I just feel like that's in your DNA and the sooner or later something is gonna just spark that energy so uh, what the school system or society we have don't do you know we have to take it up on our responsibility to do you have you know you know you always hear these petitions of you know we need to have you know more African history taught in school and taught at a certain level and I've been hearing that for the last you know the last 10 20 years and you know, and I give it to everyone who have you know done their best to you know to push for what they believe in, because if you're going to a, a school in your district and all of the children are just you know this African descendants, then naturally they should learn things that's going to progress them, and you know, and if you do otherwise, it's kind of like you're you're training you know you're, you're training a, a group of people to be you know to be you know. To be to be brainwashed to go into society and do what you want them to do to basically, you know, basically maintain their own oppression and keep society going by working certain jobs. You, know, you look at countries, uh, historic like countries like um, like England or France, um, and that's because you know, I have family that live in both countries, or Amsterdam or wherever. Um, a few decades ago, the countries were opened up to you know. To, to for for lower class work, yeah, and that's you know how my parents even came, that's how my mom even came to you know to New York City. She came uh, and you know she was you know she was able to work you know one of those jobs where you take your people homes or take care of the well and you know and that's how a lot of us came here during those decades. And it's 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 not going to be a, a situation where these things are just opened up in the last uh, century and then. We're just equally treated, treated right, or society is just set fairly. Uh, it's you know it might be fair or unfair for someone to say that, but that's the reality of what you're dealing with. So, 
what I love about Marcus Garvey and why we adapt to this energy is because he was saying regardless of how things are in the world, all great nations do for themselves. You look at the great nations in Asia or Europe, they do for themselves. You, 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 know, you hear a cry for uh, Europe for the Europeans, Asia for the Asians. So Marcus Garvey put the energy out, Africa for the Africans. Let's build a conscious energy in Africa to where you take care of yourself, take care of your own, and you you know, you grow beyond, you know, beyond his circle ties of, you know, of any bad energy of who did what and and how, what happened and how we're taken away from our land of our ancestors. A lot of times, you know, people get caught up into that to where we don't ever progress. So, you know, I look to, the, I look to this build a strong energy out there to let people, you know, let our people, the Africans in the diaspora know that, you know, we have a great history and... You know, we you know you know we have to focus more on building for ourselves, and that way we you know we get a lot further. And if we look at you know uh, you know great nations in Asia several decades ago, you know they're under either the British Empire or a European nation's uh, you know, empire as far as colonialism, just like you know many countries in the world. But uh, the energy of self-sufficientness broke them out of that to where they become a manufacturing empire to where. Your colonizers begin people who have to beg to do business with you because they now understand that they need you more than you need them. So that's where I'm at with uh, Africa, and and then it seems like you know decades of great energy that should have been you know, progressive as far as the connection, as far as dual citizenship and things like that, and it's just not really moving. So that's why people like myself are looking to push the culture stronger. Because, you know, we have the love for the culture and love for reconnecting. You mentioned um, study groups. What exactly do these groups consist of? What kind of issues do you discuss? How are they organized, etc.? Yeah, excellent. Uh, study groups. When you're doing study groups, you're doing study groups based on uh, roots and culture. So you're talking a lot about the history. So you're going back to like the Nile Valley civilization, where Africans from modern day, now Ethiopia and Egypt, build great empire. And great empires that influence the world of you know religion, military, education, and then just greater civilization. And you learn about the the great uh, history of the of the West African civilization hundreds of years before uh, European invaders came in and you know, took and and, and 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 took market of the different resources that were in the different countries before any of that. We talk about great empires that were progressive. And, you know, we also talk about the transatlantic European slave trade because it's in relevance to, you know, the time frame before and after. So it just really just taught you um, about your history, which we're not taught. And also, when you talk about Marcus Garvey or Malcolm X, you're talking about great men who want you to understand that you, you, you can't smile and, and, and grin and beg and you know and work your way into the system and things just change and all of a sudden everything is all good they you know, do their work they explain it to you that you know your best bet is to you know you you, you live in a, you live you live in a land where you can you can you know you can build trade build skills build business and do for yourself and take care of your own and and look to and look to make your natural connection with your ancestors the way you want to make it versus someone else telling you about your history and how did you first become aware of um, like the teachings of Marcus Garvey? Excellent, yes. Uh, good friends of mine once, you know, moved down here, just started, you know, you started, it's something that, something that you know about, but once you started meeting more people and like I was talking about the different study groups, once you start, once you open the historical books with um, historical details and start studying and started just being more conscious of it, it, it opens up. So it's just that initial connection and then having access to, you know, one of his few books that I have, like Marcus Garvey, Life and Lessons, and the Philosophy of Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, you know, which talk, taught about, talked about his, his, his upbringings in Jamaica, and him just seeing things just being unfair in early, early 1900s, late uh, 1800s, and wanted to just, you know, wanted to just make a difference, you know. To, to where he led the you know greatest mass organization that you know the world has seen, uh, the UNIA, to where it just 
it just you know it just give you positive energy about that you know you you know we as a people you know have our destiny and as long as we take charge of our destiny we're good to go but if we let other people govern our destiny you know we'll continue to fail do you think you relate especially to Marcus Garvey because he's a fellow Jamaican absolutely and in the sense that uh, he came to America and wanted to get his brothers to connect with him to Africa and connect with the African continent you know so it's like the same you know, same upbringing same interest and same overall mission uh, and the mission is really to to connect into Africa where we can you know where we can build a lot of projects for ourselves and not be susceptible to you know more and more uh, you know more and more invaders or more and more business people who call themselves business people but come into rob your resources to ship out to their countries or just to look into this take over your, your business and your manufacturing sector uh, so it you know it's you know yeah. being, being born in Jamaica like right now you know we look at countries like Jamaica Trinidad different countries in the Caribbean most of those countries are just under control financially by you know you know by the International Monetary Fund, by the World Bank, by the, by organizations that they you know they make deals with and fall into debt to where their countries are being controlled and the African continent have you know have a good chance because if you look at Ghana and look along the the Atlantic coast there in Ghana you know from Accra to Cape Coast, Takaradi and so on, it's not like in Jamaica where places like Montego Bay, Negril, and Ocho Rios where you have or European Asian resorts or business that they 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 have this they build to this control tourism or just to control this business in someone else's country and you know what the country or the employees get might just be little to nothing and right there in West Africa there's a clear opportunity and you know we never know what might what that coast might be turned into but as you know, greedy people run around the world looking for investments of things to do. The African continent has been like the last, you know, like we talk about the or for savvy investors or, or where you have a land of abundance with you know with with, with, with resources that the world is you know thriving off. So you know the, the energy of the world becomes fighting for the African resources, and it's important to Africans in America or in the diaspora that. Your continent is full of riches and needs your genius to connect and you have a wonderful opportunity there. But it takes a little work because we've all been brainwashed or confused because, you know, we're not living our culture. Even those of us living on the continent, some of us are lost our ways to where, you know, we, you know, we're, you know, they have satellites all over the place. So people are watching the MTVs and the BTs and they're watching the, 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 these, these, uh, reality shows that are showing anything but reality and the people are feeling that they need to live this way and carry themselves this way and that's why I talk about a loss of culture. Sure and why do you um, concentrate on West Africa specifically? Yeah and, um, and I mentioned this in one of my videos uh, and I was explaining to people um, like, like I don't have any issues with people going to South Africa and I've, I've been to South Africa twice and you know but when it comes to wanting to reconnect to your roots, um, most of us that you know, most of us in the Caribbean, in America, the African descendants are from the tropical locations, right where dungeons were built to house our ancestors before they were shipped across to the world. So, you know, so from North America all the way down to South America, uh, people were taken, and most of our people were taken along those. 16 to 18 West African countries and mainly uh, Ghana and beyond Ghana you have you know you have uh, Senegal you have Gori Island and that's another you know another you know another main dungeons and that's big for tourism and also you have Benin I've been to all three of them and it's you know our whole program is not about you know you know not about uh, savior or that that part of history it's you know it's that's it's included and since it's included you know my uh, the program i built work around reconnecting uh, africans in the diaspora to their you know to the land of their ancestors and the you know and, and the energy of their their culture but at the, so 
what it does it's you know get them you know you know, get them clarity of you know what we can do to to build certain things, and the identify identification with Africa is initially initially that because most of us are gonna naturally come from that area, and you know the DNA testing I never really get it and I never really trust it, but I'm yet to hear people tell me that they come from the places I know that most of us come from, which is Ghana, Benin, Nigeria, Senegal, um, you know. But um, you know, you know, West Africa is also very tropical, and someone like myself that come from Jamaica does love the tropical energy. The same fruits grow, grow there, and it's this you know, it's a beautiful climate, and you know, you also and there's a lot you can do in the country. And I I've been to you know other parts of Africa, and and the the history the, the history that talks about the rest of Africa being independent was led right there in Ga Ghana by Kwame Nkrumah in 1957. So it has that history, and then in America, America is big on kente cloth, mud cloth, and all those things are just right from Ghana. So the, the, you know, the spirit and the connection is naturally connecting me to Ghana based on uh, those many things. Okay, and um, do you think that this is kind of bigger than your company? Do you think you're part of a, a wider movement? Absolutely. Um, it's you know, it's you know we. Moving this a small base, but you know the movement energy is very important um, as far as the impact. You know, I've only taken about 180 different people from America to Ghana, and you know, several of them have, you know, are living and doing business there. But everything starts small, and uh, we have you know we have a small staff, but uh, we are, we're looking to enterprise. The more groups of people we can do uh, tours with, especially like religious groups. Uh, you know, that would just go to business and uh, the more we can get set up there in Ghana the more we can build about build the level of investments that I talk about building manufacturing and it's like everything is made in China that drive me crazy everything I look at around here in this you know this office is made in China and people who want to get clothing made and things made is like the first natural instinct is made in China made in China and we have many opportunities of where things can be made in Africa, and you know we just have to. You know, we just need the initial work to be done. So myself naturally would just build out, you know, build into manufacturing. What kind of you mentioned religious groups? What kind of religious groups would you be interested in partnering up with? A church group, um, a Christian group. Um, uh, why? Yeah. Why specifically? I mean. Why would you specifically be interested in um, religious groups? Because I live in the South. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, South, the Bible mm. Belt of the world, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where you have churches and liquor stores in abundance. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, yeah, and, well, I, and I should make fun of that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, churches and liquor store in abundance in the area, and yeah. you, know, you have. And when I, when you look at the, the groups of people who actually do certain things in Africa. Um, I'm sure many other groups do things, but the, it's not a lot of groups I know personally, are just uh, church groups or people I met. That's a uh, my church group took me, and that's how I was able to learn about this because you know, we have people who come on a trip and uh, you know, check with them as far as their background, how they got interest in Africa, and some of them mm -hmm. is through the church. So, you know, for someone that live in you know, live in the south or live in Georgia, that's the ideal social group of people, and then you know, we also have you know, lawyers. Um, Accountants in, in in our groups of you know MBAs in different groups. So just any social group that's that has any level of wanting to, either, you know, and it doesn't have to be roots based. We have business and investments and things of that nature and manufacturing and many things open. Uh, you know, my ideal thing is to, you know to let people know about you know, the, the the historical events and that's why we have portions of the trip deal with that and also portions of the trips deals with collecting school supplies and collecting black dolls. To get to black children and then people understand that children you know children of you know children children get confused when they have dolls that don't look like them you know simple things like that in the yeah. program yeah um how do you keep in touch with your roots personally in your daily life in my daily life yes i do africa tourism investment as a main part <laughs> my, as a main part of my business so i'm always meeting people and I don't always look like I'm there in Ghana where I'm just wearing dashiki and I'm just there and you know that move, but um, 
you know this you know this you know building energy with you know, people on building energy with as far as this investing in Africa traveling and you know, and not not like just getting so caught up into these holidays and your Black Fridays and this and that and learn to just save some money and invest it on yourself and take your trip and things like that. So I just try to share that with people and I try to just live that myself and just you know work to the future. This you know this because anyone who's looking to live and build business, I do you know wonderful things in Africa. You have to have a you know great game plan. So. You have to just you know, be a focus and keep away from the distractions. There's many distractions, especially living like you know the Atlanta area. Uh, you know you have Sin City, downtown Atlanta, or different parts of Atlanta, and there's just distractions. I myself here just running my business and doing my work, and then just focusing on the future. So would you say you live you live your life with um, kind of Afri strong African values? Yes, African values that dealing with the nation building and you know, you know we us working together, helping each other out, and you know respecting each other, and just not just selling ourselves out for money or for just you know for you know, certain things. Being true to who we are, and knowing that you know we can be who we are, and respectfully have our own, and not always feeling like we have to sell out to everybody else, and you know try to just you know. Because that's the greatest trick that you know people try to pull on you that you need them more than they need you, and you should give up what you have and accept what is being you know what they're offering. You know, it's kind of like, all right, I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you some some alcohol and some guns, and you give me your, your, your you know, you give me your prisoners. Insane decisions like that. With this interrupted the world that that we live in so it's like you know we just have to really be focused on what we're doing you know and i hear many stories of you know of how our people end up on this side of the world and you know i'm not here to point any fingers or blame any, you know or, or, or blame anybody you know it's unfortunate and it is what it is uh but we're at the point now where you know we, we have to learn from you know from the many mistakes and say hey you know what Let's you know. Let, let, let's help ourselves. Let's try to let's try to let's try to look at perspective of what's really going on. Are we really being tricked or fooled to thinking that you know we can you know we can be something that we're not, or do we just really need to go back to our roots? And I take one stance: we should go back to our roots, and that's always for me. Um, that's you know I've, I've you know you know, you know been out there in the you know the you know what I call the plantations of the world. The different jobs and things, you know, from this well-paying jobs and things like that, and you see the people that you work with, and you see the mind frames of the people who are in charge and everything, and the way the company works and everything. The straight modern-day plantation. So, you know, everybody have to do what they have to do. You know, some people have to. You know, some people have multiple children and so on. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't never knock the hustle. Do what you have to do, but I always say, take some of that that money you make, you know, your hundred thousand dollars, and take a journey, and you know. Connect with you know take take one of our two week journey to Ghana, and not saying you should go there and at your job in dashikis and everything. But realistically, I don't know how it's going to transform you, you know. But it's something that you know I, I want to see more of our people invest in because it's you know when I hear people talking about they want to go to all kind of places in the world that has nothing to do with them or their culture, but some people just realistically don't know. And I try to present. Our Africa tour is as pleasant as possible because it's not like you know you're going on a tour and you're gonna learn about slavery and history all the time. You're talking about a tour that has a lot of wonderful programs in it: shopping, doing business, nightlife, networking, socializing, and that's you know you know that's a joyful time. But do you think? Sorry. Go ahead. Um, do you think all African Americans should be looking into their roots and thinking about these kind of cultural identity issues? Absolutely, absolutely. Especially the ones who can afford the, uh, you know, afford the journey. Uh, some people financially is just not even disciplined to get there. But you know, when you have, you know, when you have friends or people, you know that that you know uh, that makes a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of, lot of money, and they, you know, you know, they can work it in their budget, you know, one way or another. And I don't know if they, some people get scared or not, but. Uh, we do top level mark, top notch marketing as far as just letting you see the pictures and the videos of you know the tour you're going on, and then just doing conference calls, and going through details to let you know 
what to expect and what kind of journey you're going to that way you can be clear like I always like to be clear about the five star accommodations some people work for corporate companies and they only put them in like the Marriott and the Hilton and I explain to people you know that if you need those hotels we can get you set up because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know you know deny you of you know certain things you want but the journey of a lifetime is set up to give you certain experience and all of the hotels you're gonna go and go to are owned by you know Ghanaians and Africans who have moved to Ghana and set up business and what you're doing you're getting a home feel experience from them because if you're looking to come to the country and do business you know it's good for you to know that uh, you have people like yourself who have lived in America and now you decide to retire or you decide to you know you came up on a good investment and you decide to use some of that to you know make a move you know you'll see people friendly people you know doing many things from owning restaurants uh, nightclub hotels, uh, tour bus company, and uh, many, you know, many facets of uh, business. So they get a, you know, so it's, they get a special, uh, a special treat in many ways. And you might come for one part of the journey, and you just end up just. I tell people just go with the flow, and you know, and you and this, and, you know, this is a treat because I know I feel just being here in America every day. Uh, you know, even as an entrepreneur, I do IT. Uh, technical uh, service and support so I have, I have appointments just you know, throughout the day and and you know work from home projects like web design and or business projects I, I work for you know work at this throughout the evening or the night and you know it's like you're here every day and you just work and work and work and, and all your money is going to paying rent paying for the car paying insurance and all the things that make you know America richer and make you know and you know and and rich and rich and it's like at least you could do is this you know we all get two weeks or if you're self-employed you can take whatever time you want off you know you know take some time off and you know just you know get away and refocus uh, because you you drive yourself to the point where you drive yourself into the ground of this heart attack and death to where you, you next thing you know you're 70 years old and you're this you know you're you know you've been on social security and you're going back and forth to the doctor every day and you know, you have all these medications you're taking, and I'm speaking from a point of me just knowing a lot of people, different age group, and people I do business with. Um, you know, many people that I do a lot of work with people that are you know retire or going into retiring, and you know, people who own small business, and you know, you 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 see, you just you know, you, you work and work, and it's like, you know, another thing is like. Once you finish that job, you know, because I, I, I joke about this and I tell people, it's like, you know, we can't all work on a plantation forever. I was explaining to them, I, I, I worked at, um, I work a contract at a company where they had guys that was working there for 50 years since they was 18 years old and they did not want to retire and they had to kick them off the job and yeah. give them forced retirement. I was like, I was like, sooner or later, you're going to have to you know, leave the plantation. So, so what, you know, so a good interest is you know you can live and do business in Africa you can learn about you know you can build your small business to the point where you can you know you can make certain things work you know, and it's like now is the time versus later you know when you have the energy and when you can kind of just build something because everything takes time to grow so just like this relationship of connecting to Africa you make the initial journey and you can evaluate for yourself and you know you have people like myself and other people you know, in our, in our in our business where you can communicate with and we just you know our goal is to be honest with you and you know we love to have more and more people living in Ghana doing business with us so we can get better respect you know get we can market ourselves for dual citizenship and certain things. Have you ever received any backlash from African Americans or people of other communities who don't like these who don't think these kind of issues matter? Oh yeah, um, people. Yeah, and you know, people are gonna say a lot of ignorant uh, things. Like I just got off the phone with a friend a while ago, and you know, you know, you know, when friend, my line, I got rid of my personal line a long time ago, a few years ago, and this is the only line I have, um, and it has my business, not this line that we're talking on, mm -hmm. on my cell phone line, and you know, business cards and everything is just made with this business number and information on the website, and it's like if I'm gonna talk to people, you don't call me, call me, let's talk about some business. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, it's fine to call and say how you're doing and everything. So, yeah, I was like, you know, I'm, you know, working on some setting some appointments and, you know, getting, you know, getting some of these folks to lock in on our October 2015 journey coming up. And, you know, 
I think his reply was like going to Ghana again. I was like, that's what we do. Um, we yeah. have, we're, we're looking to build business in Africa. And if we're looking to do certain things, we have to be consistent. We can't like be on the fence. And I tell people who want to come on a journey, let's, let, let's set things up so it can, it can work out for you to come because we can do, I can, I can share many cutback programs on how you can make the journey by cutting back on a lot of the things that we, you know, we feel we need and we spend money on. You know, but uh, as far as, 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 as far as them, you know, what I'm trying to, you know, get, you know, get them or other people to understand is we have to be true to what we're looking to do. We have to be committed. If we're looking to start a business or build a business, we, you know, we need to be clear. Am I going to start this business and quit it in five years? Or am I going to build something and stay true to it? So 10 years later, I started, I started two business 10 years ago, Bomani IT service and consultation and the Africa tours and investments. And you know, I still do it to today. So I'm always meeting people like that. But um, you know, my thing to them is I've been doing this for 10 years and you know me for a long time. And you're one of the people I know that make a lot of money. You know, uh, that make you a good deal, come on a journey with us, take some time off. Yeah, yeah. So I share that with them. But you know, um, you can't force, you know, you can't force people. Some people just, they're, they're lost. But if you want to open up your mind, coming to Africa with us is a, a wonderful thing. And we just, we have a great time. And um, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that people see that through the website, the Facebook and the YouTube page. Sure. How are, you, how are your clients received when they travel to Africa? How are they received by other Africans? Yeah, since we set the platform, they're well received. Um, we have... You know, we have a tour guide, we have a tour assistant, and we have uh, different people on our staff there in Ghana that's known us for many years, and you know we come uh, basically every October, so they're looking forward to reaching out to us. So it's you know so they just become part of the family to where they meet people, they welcome people in automatically, to where if someone decides that they want to stay maybe an extra few days or so. Uh, you know, someone who say, hey, you can stay at my house and hang out with me and, you know, you get a chance to just see how Ghana is, you know, without the fancy tour bus and without uh, Bomani taking care of you and holding your hands and things like that. And so, you know, we have, you know, wonderful options uh, like that, but we're just welcome with um, great energy. And the, the reason I feel that we're welcome with great energy because we bring great energy. Uh, another group of people might be, you know, I live here in Atlanta, so you can have another group that do a tour tour similar to this and it's a group of bougie uh, you know, bougie folks who just feel like uh, the black people in africa or people should in general should just suck up to them because they you know because you know you know they're you know they have all these high position all these big companies and they make so much money and everything and you know when when you know when you become when you when you're looking to connect to a country like ghana and you're carrying that attitude People are gonna look at you like, oh, those bougie Americans or those bougie Black Americans, or they think they can just come here and tell us what to do. That's why our government shouldn't give them no citizenship, because that's what they think they're gonna do. They're gonna come into our country and boss us around and think they they own us and things like that. And you know, and you can't blame any you know any individual for for, for feeling that way, because it's like, who are you to, you know? It's like, and that's why I said it's dangerous when people f take positions. Like oh, they sold us into slavery, or or start thinking with that mindset, because then you start looking at your brother and sister, looking at a respect for you and being just like yourself, who, who's working, as as something versus you know versus you know versus someone that you would like to build a relationship or connect with. So, people have done that, and you know, and so, you know, you might hear some people say you know they won't like demonize like all African Americans or all Africans in diaspora, but they acknowledge that some of our people in, in, in the diaspora that come to Africa act a certain way and act disrespectful and, you know, and they're not going to you know, tolerate it. Just like, you know, no one, no one in any country should allow any visitor come to their country and treat them bad because they're spending money and they, you know, so, you know, you know, you know simple things like that, you know, we explain to people through conference call. And things like that that you know we don't operate like that and if you're gonna come travel with us you need to travel with a conscious mind and an open mind or you'll be you know you'll be you know you you know you'll be disappointed you know so that's one of the things that we offer and if somebody's really bougie and you know they need to go to Africa you know we, we wouldn't deny people 
who want to go to Africa, you know, but we'd respectfully talk with them and put, to, put together a program for them that they can get some of the amenities that they want. Like one of the hotels we go to, it doesn't have hot water, so it's like if you have an issue with that, I have another hotel I'll send you to. Yeah? And you know, simple things like that. It's all about communication. And I tell everybody who does business, know the people who you're doing business with. Check their background, check their history, check what they're about, check their passion. Some people do things just to make money and get over on people. Some people do things to you know, honestly make a living, but also some people do things you know because it needs to be done and they you know, and that's why you have <laughs> and that's why you have so much chinese restaurants in black communities you know just to give an example you know they realize that they need to go to black community and dominate the market and and and, and make their money they realize that's an entry point yeah, yeah. And the, and your clients who do decide to repatriate how well are they able to adapt to african culture Exactly. That's a that's a great question. Uh, from the get go, they understand that you know, in order for you to learn the culture, culture, you have to live in the culture, and you have to give up certain, you know, certain, you know, certain notions, a certain feel, a certain fantasies, and then be real and open up, and then you'll be a, a, accepted by the country, by the people, and you have a better experience. So, for the most part, all of them are having a wonderful uh, reconnection. And that's the thing about it. Our program, you know, we have a program that, that takes you from not knowing anything about Africa, traveling to Ghana with us, to, you know, to being open and being set up to live and do business in the country, whether, you know, it's during the time of you being, you know, being retired or just in the now time. Um, sure. How do you, I'm just interested in how you market your company. I mean, how do you get out word about your company? Exactly, and word of company becomes word of mouth. Um, all like all of the people I do IT uh, work for, I share the information with them. I have postcards, business cards, flyers that I put in you know uh, different parts of the city that I work in. I put in the bookstores. I put put in um, uh, restaurants and just you know kind of get out. But at the same time, to the website itself and all of the Facebook pages generate a lot of they generate a lot of hits. People watch a lot of the videos, and also. People watch a, people watch a, um, people like to look at a lot of pictures and they like to just look at the digital information. So with us, if you go on the internet and start looking for us, you'll find all of our details and you'll find, and what I'm big on is documentation. You find over 300 uh, videos with, with myself in Ghana and other people and just the different tour groups. And you'll find yourself nine different tour galleries of our Ghana trip from the first day to the end of the tour on every you know on every journey and you know our, our information is just out there so and yeah you know, we have a list of people who we get via you know where we email and, and and text and when we do conference calls they're out publicly so information can be found but you know those you know those who are interested just have to take the time and do the research and look through the information and can they can always call me and we'll go through everything the main, only thing that we require is that they're clear that we only do serious business so you know because we don't we don't like to waste our time and don't like to waste other people's time you know um, if you are interested in coming to africa and you're clear on our program let's talk let's get things set up you can come with a group or we can do something else for you if you're somebody you know, say you you're from Ireland as an example and you belong to a, you know you belong to Ireland social group and you want to do something special but at the same time to whatever you decide you want to do it involves with you wanting to do it in Ghana and we set that up for you uh, we're you know we're you know that, that's that's what we do we you know we enjoy travel and we enjoy sharing the history of Ghana with you know with our people but at the same time to for those respectfully want to come and learn about the history of the country and also want to do business in the country you know, we just want them to understand, just be clear about your intentions of coming into the country, because the African continent has been through enough already. You know, so and it's you know it's dealing with enough already. So I don't want to be the one to be bringing people there to take over the country. So you know, if you you know, so I, that's why I have to be clear of people's intention. You know, if you're gonna do something like that, do it on your own and do it without us being involved, because you know we're we don't need nobody trying to blow up our, our cars or blow up our house and things like that. We do, you know, we do clean, respectful business. 
Yeah. And just going back to the whole um, repatriation movement, you talk a lot about like energy and things like that. Do you think there's any kind of like, spirituality involved in it? Yeah, the spiritual yeah. energy of repatriation is always wonderful. You know, you're going to reconnect to your roots. You're going to, 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 to touch the energy of your ancestors and say, ancestors, I've made it back. Many of my brothers and sisters didn't make it back. Uh, lead me into what we can do to making the African continent strong and respectful. I would say that's a spiritual, you know, connection, and you have people who feel that way. Oh, but you don't think? I mean, is it kind of like a religious thing? I mean, um, you know, people talk about religion and spirituality. Uh, it's, um, most people probably say it's different versus same, but uh, it's um, it's more spiritual than anything else. Right. As um, and, and the, the distracting thing, you know, when you're talking about the dungeons, Elmina. Holocaust dungeons or Cape Coast Holocaust dungeons is the fact of, you know, the, the sanction of what the church played in in in, a, in, in that whole Holocaust. Uh, you had Africans in the dungeons crying, screaming, while churches being held above the dungeons. And both of them, Cape Coast, I mean, also I want to say the same thing in Senegal, um, the Gori Island. So it's, you know, that part becomes a little, you know, this, it throws many people up and many, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've heard, overheard people just walking by and, you know, they travel with us, they start to question their faith, you know, it's not, you know, my thing for, to tell people to question their faith or anything is for them to just find their true path and just put things together for themselves, but, and that's how I would say, you know, it's more spiritual, uh, because the people who are truly making that connection, they realize, you know, the, the strength and the energy and, and, and reconnecting to, to do something beyond himself which yeah. is... um and how do you do you, when you face african americans who kind of don't agree with um the whole idea of going back to your roots how do you deal with those kind of people yes you know i'm a, I'm, I'm a gentleman gentleman a peaceful person got a military mind revolutionary soul but nevertheless, you know, we run, we run business, so we are, you know, we're peaceful and ethical. And you know, sometimes you have to get a little, you know, you have to get a little rowdy with people, and you have to, you have to break out the weapons of technology and the weapons of this knowledge and under, wisdom and understanding. And mm. a lot of people lack the knowledge, wind, wisdom, and understanding about Africa. So sometimes you have to just educate people like a child. And and if they want to be educated, you educate them. But if they don't and they want to battle, I might just battle a debate with you temporarily, but you know, usually I have work to do and things to do, so I wouldn't really waste my time. And I, um, I let people know about what we're doing by giving them cards and tell them you can check it out, you can give me a shot, we can have a more respectful conversation. But um, I tell them what we're doing basically in, in a nutshell is um, some of us feel like we have no future in America. And if you feel like you do, fine. I'm, you know, once again, like we all saw about, we don't not the hustle. You do what works for you. You know, what, you know, like people say, what floats your boat, so what makes you happy. You know, do you? But um, for for those of us who feel that they'll live a better life retiring Ghana, I want to talk with you so we can do business, and you know, work it out to where you know we just make it work out for both of us as business person and clientele. Um, but for you know, for those who just don't want to have anything to do with you know the information, th that's up to them. I tell them that we we have to do what we have to do as far as sharing our information throughout the different market outlet that I talk about to let to find the people that are interested and want to know about their roots. Some people might work a job and they hate their boss, they hate the job they do, uh, but the only thing that keep them going is they you know they make a lot of money and they might have enough to just get away from that job. And people, you know, and you only have a few people in the world you can talk to, and I'm one of them. You can sit down and talk with me, and we can plan out a whole strategy of how you can get away from the hell, the hells of America that you live in, if that's the way you feel. You know, I'm not here to judge you from what you feel. I have people call you and tell me all kind of things, and that's confidential between me and them. And, you know, as long as they don't say that they're going to do this crazy violence or something like that, that's, that's just a different story. But it's like, if, if you know if they, they, they some people just don't feel comfortable living in America and especially some people who have opened themselves up to to learning about our you know learning certain things because you know when you're when you, you know when you're you know when you're done when not done when you're just you when your mind is just gullible and you're just taking everything that 
you see on TV and what you're taught, then you know you make the probably the perfect uh, this employee. But when you become somebody who become more conscious and say, you know, this is not right. I do not want my children to grow up pledging the, pledging to the flag of America because I feel a certain way. And you know, it's not only black people that feel this way. You know, other people feel this way. But since we're talking about Africans, you know, I'm just share you know sharing you know different uh, scenarios. So okay. that's fine. That's like if people feel like they don't need to speak English or or they want to speak an African language, you know, hey, call me and call me and we'll you know we'll talk about it and we can get you set up with someone that can teach you and connect you with you. Our you know, our course of energy is, you know, open your mind. Let's learn about your your roots and culture. And if you want to do anything more than that, let's help you and let's connect you. We have a beautiful network. We've worked very hard to build this network. Have a 10 year reputation and uh, we wouldn't destroy it for nothing or nobody. Our goal is, you know, is for the purpose of reconnecting Africans here in the diaspora to the African continent for the purpose of nation building, for the purpose of us doing for self and not get caught up into every other confusion that's going on in the world and every other agenda. You know, we stick to what we do and we respect everybody else in the world for what they do and anyone want to connect with us, partners with us, do business with us. We can do it. We just have to talk respectfully so we can come up with an agreement. Just like you and I are talking on the phone and talking on Skype and talking about this project you're doing. And I'm telling you, you know, let, let, let's do this. Let's, you know, let's, 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 let's let, let, let us come together and share some information with, with people. And we never know how far it might get. Yeah, exactly. Um, but like on a more personal level in your day-to-day -day life, do you find that some African-Americans are condescending towards you personally because... I mean, you're a fairly recent immigrant and they feel like they can't relate to you because of that. Man, it, it, it's a good question. Yes. I've just never felt accepted in this country by much of anybody, really. Honestly, it, it, it's a heartbreaker for me to say that. But it's the truth. Uh, you know, ever since I've been here, since 88, when I was 11, and I you know, came here to, um, to Brooklyn and... And I had a strong Jamaican accent, so that's always confusing with people. And people, you know, yeah. you, you, people are children, so you know, the children say so going to make fun of you and things like that. But even beyond that, this I just always felt like an outsider. And the only reason I don't feel like an outsider to a point anymore is because I've learned to connect to my roots, learned to find out who I am and what's my value and what my focus and vision should be. So. I'm just very thankful for that and that's why we work very hard to share the experience with people about reconnecting to your roots. You can live your whole life a lie and your whole life confused. You know? So the sooner you open yourself up to you know, your culture and take that chance and, and open up, the better it, it can be. Because you know? one of the things is people talk about your true passion. Sometimes you don't ever find out what your true passion is. And for us, we know what our true passion is. You know, it's building enterprises in Africa, reconnecting our people, and educating our people on why they should do those things. Yeah, I think that's a good note to end it on. Absolutely, absolutely. I appreciate your energy, uh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, thanks a lot for talking to me again. I really appreciate that. All right, and if you can just, um, I'm not sure how much of your information you want to share on you know on recording but uh if you'd like to just uh give your name again and your your work and your operation of what you're doing and share with our audience yeah sure um so my name is victoria womedimo and i'm a student at columbia university graduate school of journalism i'm currently doing my master's in journalism um and this is i'm talking to bomani about my master's project my main master's thesis which is um, kind of about the cultural identity issues faced by both African Americans and first generation African immigrants in America. Um, and more specifically, I'm interested in how African Americans relate to their African roots and kind of comparing that with how first generation African immigrants identify with their American nationality in, um, in a society where being African American is already kind of an, um, an established concept. So, yeah, mainly about cultural identity issues and and um, and what it's like to be an African in America. Excellent, and that is beautiful. Now, how did you come up with this topic, or why did you take interest in this topic as being someone? Um, you mentioned uh, uh, France, England. Can you clarify um, where your, your birth, where you were born, and the language oh. you speak? 
Sure. Well, um, I was born in London, um, but I moved to Paris when I was 10 years old. And um, so for that reason, I do feel very French sometimes. I speak English and French. I also speak Spanish. Um, But the reason that I'm mostly involved in cultural identity issues is just because I've moved around so much in my life. And I'm also ethnically from a lot of different places. I mean, my father is um, half Nigerian, half English, and my mother is from Trinidad. Um, but my father was born and raised in Nigeria, and my mother was born and raised in England. Um, and they've also moved around a lot in their lives. So culturally, I'm very confused personally, which wow. is why I'm also interested when other people are culturally confused, um, or when, or the opposite, where they know exactly where they belong, like you, for example. Um, I think it's really admirable because personally, I have no clue where I'm from. <laughs> Wow, and um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, and if you have a few more minutes, um, I just want to talk with you about that. Oh. Uh, you mentioned a combination of African and um, British, and then you living in France. So yeah. wow, that's a lot of um, wow, that's a lot of culture. And, that's a lot of culture and ethnicity. Yeah, it is. Uh, wow. So what do you consider yourself? Oh gosh, I have I, no clue. I mean, when being? people ask me where my home is, I say Paris, just because that's where I have my most established childhood memories. I don't remember that much from living in England. Um, but then, I mean, I'm not sure but race-wise. I just say I'm mixed race because my father is, I mean, my father's mixed race himself. He's black and, and white. And then my mother is, I mean, a mix because she's from Trinidad where there's a very big mix of African and Indian cultures. Um, I mean, like fifty-one percent of the of the country is from Indian origin, wow. and forty-nine percent is African origin. Wow. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, like uh, in, interracial marriages as well. So, um, honestly, I I've never known how to answer that question, and not, I'm not sure I, never, I ever will. Wow. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you sharing that, and that's many yeah, of I the issue it. that there's people are, like you mentioned. The two parts are people who align with their roots and people who are trying to figure it out it's a serious yeah. uh, conversation and yeah. wow that was uh wow so um you said mixed race so because you know when you look at applications 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 or any paperwork now everything i want to know about your your you know about your, your race yeah and it's i don't like putting down black and things like that but it's this confusion but that's a society that we live in. We want us to all be multicultural, and then yeah. all get along and go along with the status quo as long as their corporations are rich from our hard work and labor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, in in England, there's always these forms that I have to fill out that um, that say mixed race, white and black, and I'm just like, well, I'm mixed race, but I'm and I'm white and black, but I'm also other things as well. So I never know. What to, I never tick that box. I always tick the mixed race other box. Wow. And how you feel about that? Confused? Um, confused, but I mean, I'm I'm not upset about it. I mean, it doesn't kind of like um, it doesn't consume my life or my you know my my energy. But um, I've I'm, I think I'm kind of coming to terms with just the fact that I'm from everywhere and nowhere kind of thing. You know, oh, wow. I'm from right. many different places and. I mean, that's okay. It's just, it's a bit upsetting sometimes, I guess, when, I mean, for example, when I go to Nigeria, I'm considered to be white, you know, or when, um, but when I'm in England, for example, I'm considered to be black by white people. Wow. Um, for real? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I grew up in a very white society in very predominantly white schools and in those kind of places, I mean, it's not necessarily... I think it's pretty much just ignorance and lack of education. But if you're even slightly, um, if you're even slightly coloured, they'll cons- they usually consider you black. Because mm, um, right. people have a very black white mentality. You know, either you're either you're completely white or you're just not white at all. Um, but then I'm not considered black by black people either. So wow, I that is know. that has got to be frustrating. It is. It's quite frustrating. And I mean, I have a lot of Nigerian friends as well. I mean, I grew up in in a very um, Nigerian way with lots of Nigerian family and friends. Um, And I'm accepted by them as a friend, but I'd never be accepted by them as a Nigerian. Um, So even though I, you know, I know a lot about Nigeria, I'm up to date on politics and, and, you know, current affairs and things like that and culture. 
Um, but it's, yeah, it's quite frustrating to kind of like not belong to one culture specifically entirely. Yeah, we'll definitely connect on that one. Uh, yeah. That is a, uh, well, um, and that's why we do what we do uh, to sure. get our folks connected. Sure. Uh, so I really appreciate you sharing that information, those details. Uh, yeah, no problem. Very real. No problem. And, and I'm so hoping yeah, that I wanted to share with you why I'm the reasons behind why I'm doing the project that I'm doing. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, definitely. And that was that was a great layout of uh, explanation. And uh, yeah. the other thing I wanted to uh, check with you is on. I want to find out uh, during our conversation. Yeah. If um, anything that we talked about has just given you more clarity on things, um, I try to be. I try to come from a straight perspective and yeah. not water things down. Yeah, absolutely. It's been really enlightening talking to you. I mean, before I came across your website, I had no idea that there were companies that were dedicated to repatriation and who were dedicating to kind of educating African Americans about their roots. I had no idea. I mean, I didn't think that they didn't exist. I just never really, it never really crossed my mind that they could exist. It's not um, something that's common knowledge. Um, and also, I mean, I think it just kind of struck me that in, in America, you have such an established community of African Americans who have no idea where they come from versus in, in Britain where, you know, even even African British people know exactly where they come from. You know, I mean, usually they're first, second, generation. third generation Africans, but they all know where they come from. You know, they usually speak the language or their parents speak the language. They eat the, you know, African food. And so they're very much in touch with their cultural identity. I don't think I've ever met a British African person who didn't know where they were from. And so I think coming here, it really struck me that, you know, the only reason African American people know that they're from Africa is because they can look in the mirror and see that their physical features. But other than that, they would have no idea. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a it's a it's a deep issue here in America where you have this you know this um, super nation America, and then you have you know and beyond its Fortune 500 companies and everything, you have racism, discrimination, and many things that are just madly just going on in confusion with race and culture. Yeah. And and I would never even think of that either. You know, it's like, you know, you hear about this perfect America and you hear about yeah. all these wonderful things about America. And then when you get a chance to live here and then learn certain things, you just start realizing that, uh, you know, but then again, you talk about a country that was built in blood. So, yeah. um, you know, it's like, what do you, you know, what would you expect? But at the same time, I didn't, never thought it was this bad. And this new thing, multiculturalism, is really causing, is really, I guess that's a solution to make it all work. If everybody yeah. just believed that we all want people and this and that, as long as you follow our rules of yeah. society and, and get along and work together and everything, everything will be fine. And now the confusion, the last thing I want to talk about. I'm excellent. Well, appreciate your honesty. It's uh it's uh, it's deep issues that we have to deal with in our society, and it's never an easy, easy way to answer those questions or share that information. Um, oh. It's um, yeah, so uh, you know, and I guess that's why I'm in a business where I'm in, in because you know we have a unique culture of what some of us are looking to do. So yeah, yeah so it's one of those things where I don't not the hustle, but at the same time too, um, you know, I want to be focused on building something for for those of us who are looking for a certain focus. So oh. I think that's my, my my clarity for that. Great. Well, thanks so much for talking to me again. And yes, um, I'm sure we'll keep in touch. Excellent. I'll definitely keep in touch. Good.